Religiously, every fall, I plan a one-week visit into the interior or the caribou region of BC to set up camp and target Stillwater Rainbow Trout. Well, this trip I decided first to meet up with some family and friends at a lake not too far out of a hundred mile house. This would be a good start to get back into the groove of the caribou and fall camping. With four or five trailers, wall tents, and great food and drink, time can go by way too fast. This larger lake can hold some fantastic fishing for some beautiful rainbow trout. And because of its size and structure, it's more or less a trolling fishery. There are some spots to anchor and cast, but due to the size, hey, why not kick back and drag some flies? Well, you guessed it. As a few days went by, I couldn't stop thinking about a little lake I'd visited earlier in the summer. From where I already was, about a three hour trip would put me there. The thought of sight fishing the clear shoals and the chance to get connected with some bigger fish took over my thought train completely. Heading off on a solo trip like this is usually situation normal for me. But here's the thing. The forecast was deteriorating, and quickly. I clearly remember the road being terrible in the summer, and pulling a trailer up there was tough. It's about 40k from service, and not a lot of people head up there. Well, as the week was starting to burn up and time was ticking away, I had to do it. So I packed up and I headed north. Like always, the first evening was the usual scramble to set up camp. When I was in my 20s, that would usually come last. Well, I guess things change. Firewood, a somewhat level campsite, and food took priority. At about 5 p.m., Minnie and I jumped on the skiff and decided to go and have a look and see if there were fish on the shoals. Yep, they were there. Back in the summer during my last visit, small loop knot mini leeches in black and brown or black and red were the absolute ticket. I picked up a few small fish this evening, but all the decent fish were playing the snob big time. We headed back in to warm up. The sky was changing, the temperature dropped, and I needed to get a fire going.
The next day I woke up to changing conditions. Rain, fog, switching winds, and a dropping barometer. I normally have no problem waiting these things out, but as the rain and hail poured throughout the day, the thought of what was going to happen to the goat trail of a road out kept my foot tapping. Being out of range to get an accurate forecast can play with your conscious. When you're camping alone and with the trailer to haul, even more so. Well, I decided to wait it out. Well, this isn't exactly what you hope for on a sight fishing trip. Um, it's completely fogged in with a slight ripple, so it's really hard to see anything. Um, the polarizer helping a bit, but this is the real deal. You come up here and apparently the forecast is like this for a few days, so let's see what happens. But this is gonna make things tough for sure. You can feel it already. As the low pressure front started switching directions and the wind was starting to calm down, a window of opportunity opened up for me. It was a late evening opportunity. I just respooled a new floating line setup and decided to stick to some smaller shrimp or scud patterns. I switched up my gear to lighter fluorocarbon tippets and headed back onto the shoal for one more kick at it. Well, here you go, because this is what it's all about. The following footage is all filmed in real time, point of view. If you look closely during this battle, there's nice fish emerging all over the shoal and they're curious about this catch. I really enjoyed this and this made the trip come to a perfect end. So sit back and enjoy it.
finally, after numerous trips out anchoring, woo! Hey, Minnie, that was a beauty. That was a beauty. <laughs>